Hello again guys and welcome back to the Retro Room. On this video we're going to take a look at this well this power supply that apparently has a bad capacitor. We're going to replace that guy. First thing we're going to do is take this PCB out of this case. Might as well get right into it. This is the power supply I tried to use when making the quad floppy machine. Try to get these cables off. Somehow. I know there's a specialized tool for this. Which I don't have. These pliers ought to do the trick. Well, this one just slid right out. Get out of there. Okay. doesn't want to come out of there. There's an idea. Then the chassis out of the way. This is why these cables and the switches they connect to can be rather dangerous. These connect directly to the power input, which means they are directly connected to mains power.
All right. Now I can get at the screw on the that was underneath all of that. Put these over here. One more and we should have this little PCB out of here. There we go. The fan connection. Looks like this has been spliced together once. Maybe the fan has been replaced at one point. Dirty. Unplug these power connections here. We'll set this aside. Okay. Pretty crusty. Let's give this a cleaning. And then we'll see about removing these two capacitors over here. purple alcohol. We'll go to cleaning some of this soot off of here. There's kind of a look like a discolored mark there. I hope that's just from heat and not that something else is popped. Gone bad. Destroyed itself. That's entirely a possibility. Since I've yet to see this power supply working. I'm going to reach over here. Power on the desolderer. That will heat up in a moment. Then we'll take these, well, this one capacitor off. That bulging one. Might as well take that other one next to it since I got a few. See if we can't buzz those off right fast. Right there. When I do this, place the nozzle over the pin that's sticking through the PCB and wait for the solder to move. <laughs> then I 
give it a little, just give it a, a chooch. That capacitor is glued to the one next to it. How annoying. Well, let's, let's ah. take out the one next to it. Solder's melted. Ah. sure everything is loose and they come right out now these are I C E H T R branded probably something cheap 2200 microfarad 10 volt 105 degree temperature and glued together. Well, I got them both out. Might as well replace them both. <coughs> Have to keep mindful of the polarity on these. One side is negative, which is this side on the new ones. And the PCBs even even has a little dash where the negative is supposed to go. These capacitors, Nichicon, 2200 microfarad, but 16 volt, also 105 degree. They should do the trick. A little higher voltage, never hurt anything. They're a little shorter than the originals, but they are newer and, you know, technology miniaturizes over time. Oh, I'm unprepared. Didn't. Get that up to temp. While well, that's while well, that's doing, there must be. Ooh. Something just smoldering away on my soldering iron. Okay, time for some crafty handwork. Bend these out so it holds that in place. Then heat the wire while putting solder to it. That seems to be a rightful mess, but that'll work.
to do for that one. Let's just set him down here. Then carefully feed this other one through all the way to the bottom. Bend the legs out like so. Let go. Oh, come on. Maybe this is what I get for not using flux. Seems to be in there though. All right, let's set the soldering iron down. Get the snips. Pop off the legs. Then And we'll very carefully lead this back into its housing. Just set it on its screw post. We'll reconnect it. Then first thing we're going to do is hook up this switch. Make sure nothing make sure nothing's grounded out, make sure everything's hooked up properly. There we go. switch right right here
for this guy. White, and then white, and then black on one side, then blue and brown on the other side. Now I need a power cable. I'm going to lean back a bit because. Well, let's not do that again. I turned off the entire lab because I flipped a breaker just by pushing that power button. There is something else entirely the matter with this power supply. And I'm not going to mess with it any further. I guess you can't win them all. I will keep this power supply aside for a later project, but for right now, that's the dangers of messing with power supplies, especially without an isolated power. Okay. <clears throat> okay, some of you were probably screaming at your screen as I connected this improperly with the pins facing toward you and the switch facing up on the top here blue on the left brown on the right and on the bottom white on the left and black on the right. I, ha I don't remember how I had this connected before, but we get a little better luck now. I don't know if you heard that. Something is making a... I'm not quite sure what that is. There's something making a kind of a buzzing noise when I apply the power. The capacitors, new capacitors are in. They seem to be, I don't know, doing their thing. But it doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be working. It seems like another component is out and I'm, I'm at a loss. Time to do a little research and some more experimentation, but that'll be it for this particular video. Well, thank you for joining me for this little adventure. Hope you have a good evening.